Welcome to the next question. So today in this video, I'll be discussing a couple of questions uh, which are similar to each other. They are based on patterns. So suppose you have a function which is satisfying a pattern like this. f of x plus y is equal to fx plus fy for all x, y belonging to r. If f of 1 is equal to k, then f of n, where n is a natural number, is equal to. See, the property that you see here is called the property of additivity. It's an additivity property and it is satisfied by all linear functions. In fact, in case addi additivity and homogeneity is uh, satisfied, then the function is linear. So, additivity is a property which looks like this and it is satisfied by all linear functions. You can even prove this. Suppose your function fx is, say, ax. So, you consider your left-hand side. So, ax is a linear function, right? So consider the left-hand side that is f of x plus y. That would become a times x plus y. So I can break it and it is ax plus ay, which is nothing but fx. And since a times y will be fy, so this is fy. There are various ways of actually proving it, but this is one of the easiest, simplest way you can see it. Any linear function would satisfy this property. Now let's come back to the question. The question is simply asking us that in case this property is satisfied and f of 1 is equal to k, then what will be f of n? Well, once I've told you that it's a linear function, maybe you can answer this just like that. But let's prove it. So what is given to us? It's given that f of x plus y is equal to fx plus fy for all x, y belonging to r. One thing I want to make sure that you guys understand, though you can see x, y here, it's a function of one variable. It's an r to r function. It's not that your input is a two-dimensional input. No, it's just x plus y. x plus y is like 2 plus 3. So the equation is basically trying to tell you that f of 2 plus 3 will give you, will be equal to, should be equal to f2 plus f3. Okay. Now, how to go about this? Let us put x equal to 1, y equal to 1. If you put x equal to 1, y equal to 1, what will you fetch? You will fetch f of 1 plus 1 is equal to f1 plus f1. So f2 is equal to twice of f1. Why am I using that? It's because I am provided with the information that f of 1 is equal to k. So I might as well use that value somewhere, right? That's how you would think of the value of input as 1 so that we can get f1 in the picture. So now I have the value f2 equals to twice of f1. Now let's try to find out further because we want f of n. So let's just try to generalize to a certain extent. Let's try to find out f2, f3, maybe f4 and then we can maybe generalize. So let us put x equals to 2 and y equals to 1. That's going to give me f2 plus 1 equals to f2 plus f1. This means f of 3 on the left hand side and it is equal to what is f2? f2 is twice of f1 and f1. So I have thrice of f1. So f3 is thrice of f1. Similarly, if you wish to move a little further, you can put x equal to 3 
y equal to 1 and you're going to get f3 plus f1 on the right hand side and f4 on the left. So f4 is, is, is equal to, I can substitute, I'm getting 3 times f1 plus f1. Hence, the pattern is pretty much clear from here that in case the input is n, the output is n times f1. And since it's given to us that f1 is k, clearly the answer would be n times k. So the answer is option b, which is n times k. Based on similar kind of thing, similar kind of pattern in, in function, let's work on another question. Let f be a function satisfying, this time the pattern that I'm trying to look at is, f of x plus y is equal to f of x into f of y. For every x, y belonging to R, if again we are given f1 is equal to certain value, this time it's 3, then summation, the sum of fr, where r goes from 1 to n, is equal to, and these are your options, 3 by 2, 3 to the power n minus 1, 3 by 2, n into n plus 1, 3 to the power n plus 1 minus 3, none of these. Now, this equation and the previous equation, these two equations are actually, uh, they were for, for the first time discussed by a great mathematician Cauchy, and they are called Cauchy's functional equations. Cauchy's functional equations. A functional equation basically means that you have an equation in which instead of uh, just variables x, y, your variables are like functions. So as you can see here, the equation is based if you want to call fx, fy as your variables. So your, your equation is based on these functions. So this becomes a functional equation. And it, these are called Cauchy's functional equation. The property that you can see here, I hope you can recognize this property. Uh, this is more commonly, you can recognize this property as the exponent, exponential property. The functions that will satisfy this property are of the form a to the power x. Again, you can counter check yourself. If you consider your left hand side f of x plus y, it would look like a to the power x plus y, which since this is an exponential form, so you can write it as a to the power x into a to the power y because base is same. And a to the power x is fx, a to the power y is fy. So hence, what do you get? f of x plus y is equal to fx into fy, right? Okay, so, well, coming back to the question. In the question, you don't really have to, you know, go too much into the details, but you can just follow up whatever is given to you. What is given to you is simply the equation given to us is the equation f of x plus y is equal to f of x multiplied by f of y f of 1 is equal to 3 and we have to find out summation so again let's try to get the pattern first of all and then we can look for the sum so if i put x1 y1 i'm going to get f of 1 plus 1 is equal to f1 into f1. So it's going to be f2 is equal to f1 square. That is 3 square. Then if I put x equals to 2, y as 1, I'm going to get f2 into f1. So f3 will be equal to f2 is 3 square into 3. So that means 3 cube. Similarly, if you want 
to check the pattern a little more. The next step is you can put 3 and 1. So F3 plus 1 will give you F3 It will be F3 multiplied by F1. So that will give you the pattern that F4 is equal to 3 cube into 3. That is 3 to the power 4. So what are we getting? In case I will be looking at F of n, I am going to get 3 to the power n. So what we have to find out is the summation Fr where r goes from 1 to n. So that means we are looking at f1 plus f2 plus so on and so forth till fn. So that means we are looking at 3, f1 is 3, f2 is 3 square, 3 cube then, so on and so forth till 3 to the power n, right? So we have to find the finite geometric sum. This is nothing but a geometric progression. You have to find the finite geometric sum. So finite geometric sum will be A r to the power n minus 1 upon r minus 1, where r stands for the common ratio. What is the common ratio here? Our common ratio is 3. Okay, so we will be getting 3, 3 to the power n, a is also 3, r is also 3, 3 to the power n minus 1 upon 3 minus 1 which gives us 3 by 2, 3 to the power n minus 1. And that is one of the options, isn't it? Yes, it is the very first option, option A. That should be the correct option.